Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of HHD Unit 3, Area of Study 1, Understanding Health and Wellbeing. The focus of today's video will be dot points 4, 5 and 6. Indicators used to measure and understand health status, incidence, prevalence, morbidity, burden of disease, disability adjusted life year, life expectancy, health adjusted life expectancy, mortality, including maternal, infant and under five, and self-assessed health status. Health status of Australians and the biological, sociocultural and environmental factors that contribute to variations between population groups, including males and females, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, high and low socioeconomic status, and those living within and outside of Australia's major cities. The contribution to Australia's health status and burden of disease of smoking, alcohol, high body mass index and dietary risks under consumption of vegetables, fruit and dairy foods, high intake of fat, salt and sugar and low intakes of fibre and iron. Health status indicators. Self-assessed health status is a measure based on an individual's opinion about how they feel about their health and well-being. Life expectancy, an indication of how long a person can expect to live, the number of years of life remaining to a person at a particular age if death rates do not change. Hale, an estimate of the number of healthy years that a person can expect to live based on current trends in death and disease patterns. Morbidity, the level of ill health or disability in an individual or population group at a particular period of time. Mortality, the number of deaths caused by a particular disease, illness or environmental factor. We have maternal mortality, which is the number of deaths of women whilst pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy due to or aggravated by pregnancy or childbirth. Maternal mortality rate is the number of deaths per 100,000 live births of women while pregnant or within 42 days of termination due to or aggravated by childbirth. Infant mortality is the number of deaths of children under the age of one. Infant mortality rate, the number of deaths per thousand of children under the age of one. Under five mortality, the number of deaths of children under the age of five. Under five mortality rate, the number of deaths of children under the age of five per thousand live births. Burden of disease is a measure of the impact of disease and injuries. Specifically, it measures the gap between current health status and an ideal situation where everyone lives to an old age, free from disease and disability. Daily is a measure of burden of disease. One daily equals one year of healthy life lost due to premature death or time lived with illness, disease or injury. YLL, years of life lost, is the fatal component. Years of life lost due to premature death. YLD, years of life lived in disability, it's a non-fatal component. Years lived in disability due to illness, disease or injury. Incidence is the number of new cases of a particular condition at a given time. And prevalence is the number of fatal cases of a particular disease or condition present in a population at a given time. Variations in health status among different population groups. Biological factors refer to the body and functioning of body systems. They include weight, blood pressure, birth weight, genetics and blood cholesterol. Sociocultural factors are aspects of society and the social situation in which people live. They include socioeconomic status, employment and education. Environmental factors 
are an individual's physical surroundings, including their geographic location, infrastructure, climate, and work environment. So we look at the variations amongst males and females, Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples, low and high SES, and those living outside or within major cities. In relation to the first category for biological, males have higher rates of abdominal fat. And since the abdomen are quite close to the heart, there is an increased risk of heart disease. Also, men have high testosterone levels, meaning that they are more likely to engage in risk-taking behaviours. For sociocultural, there are gender roles and expectations. Males are less likely to express their feelings openly, thus increasing the likelihood of developing anxiety or depression. And men are less likely to access healthcare, so conditions may go undiagnosed. In relation to environmental factors, work environment is a major component. A large amount of men have labour intensive jobs, so there is a risk of injury, even UV exposure. Females tend to have more sedentary jobs. In relation to Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples, Indigenous peoples have higher rates of low birth weight babies, meaning there's a higher risk of chronic conditions in adulthood. In relation to socio-cultural factors, low education levels means that individuals are more likely to engage in behaviours such as smoking, drug use and excessive alcohol consumption. Also, access to healthcare. Cultural factors may prevent healthcare access, meaning that chronic conditions can go undiagnosed and untreated. Environmental factors. Overcrowding can lead to communicable diseases and access to healthcare proximity may mean that chronic conditions may be undiagnosed. So this is if... Um, they don't live in an area where access to healthcare is close. Low and high SES, in relation to biological, it is the same as Indigenous, non-Indigenous and those living outside or within major cities. For socio-cultural factors, we have low education levels, meaning there's a higher chance that individuals will smoke, use drugs, or consume alcohol excessively. There's also food insecurity, which may lead to malnutrition. Less likely to access health services. They may have a limited income, and this may inhibit them from accessing health care if there are out-of-pocket expenses. Environmental factors, poor house quality, and potentially dangerous neighbours. Those living outside or within major cities. So those living outside in relation to sociocultural factors are likely to have lower levels of education and unemployment. And you just sort of have to use common sense and think there may be lower levels of education because the closest school might be an hour away or the closest workplace may be three hours away. You just have to think logically in that sense. And in terms of environmental factors, there is likely to be um, a lack of fresh food in close proximity, potentially poor road quality, as well as harsh climate and UV exposure. Many people who live outside of major cities are likely to have employment that is quite labour intensive. It could be on farms, in outdoor areas where there is limited sun protection. Behavioural contribution to health status and burden of disease. We look at smoking, alcohol, body mass index and dietary risks. Smoking 
cardiovascular disease, smoking increases blood pressure as the 4,000 chemicals in cigarettes cause atherosclerosis, cancers, toxins cause DNA damage to cells, therefore making healthy cells turn cancerous, respiratory conditions, inhaling smoke can lead to many conditions as there is reduced airflow into the lungs, for example asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Low birth weight babies, there's increased chances if the mother smokes, leading to premature death and chronic conditions in adulthood, and SIDS due to the nicotine in the child's lungs if the mother has been smoking during pregnancy. Alcohol, type 2 diabetes, since alcohol adds kilojoules to one's diet, which if not burnt off, can lead to excess fat tissue, which can lead to obesity and inhibition in glucose regulation. Cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure and strokes, cancers, mouth and liver, injuries. Alcohol is actually a depressant, meaning it inhibits activity in the body's nervous system, which decreases levels of awareness, meaning individuals are more likely to injure themselves. Body mass index, that's just the calculation as to how to figure it out. The weight in kilograms divided by the height in meters squared. A risk factor is colorectal cancer, cardiovascular disease, greater strain on heart to pump blood around the body, increasing hypertension and heart attacks. Arthritis, since there is likely to be increased pressure on joints and type 2 diabetes. Excess body fat negatively impacts secretion of insulin, which may increase the level of blood sugar in the body, leading to type 2 diabetes. Dietary risks. We're looking at the underconsumption. Vegetables. The phytochemicals are protective factors against some cancers. They also aid in the reduction of built-up plaque on artery walls. Fruit contain fiber, which lowers BMI and lowers calories, also preventing colorectal cancer as feces are passing through the intestines and being removed from the body. Dairy, calcium ossifies the bones and underconsumption can lead to osteoporosis or breaks and fractures if one has not attained their peak bone mass and iron. The body needs haemoglobin to transport oxygen around the body. A deficiency in iron can lead to anemia and some of the symptoms are fatigue, feeling weak and breathlessness. The overconsumption of fat, salt and sugar. Fat, cholesterol, is a waxy substance that the liver produces. It builds on the cell walls. Lipoproteins transport fat around the body. Low density lipoproteins are ineffective cholesterol carriers. They deposit cholesterol on artery walls and cause blockages. High density lipoproteins prevent the buildup of plaque in arteries as they carry cholesterol to the liver where it is deposited. Saturated fats found in animal fats and they raise LDLs. Monounsaturated fats, the healthiest fat that's found in plant-based oils, lowers LDLs without lowering HDLs. Polyunsaturated fats are found in vegetable oils, they lower LDLs without lowering HDLs. And trans fats are used by the food industry when they add hydrogen to poly and monounsaturated fats. They raise LDLs and lower HDLs. A high intake of saturated and trans fats raises the levels of low density lipoproteins in the body, meaning they are likely to deposit cholesterol on artery walls. Blood, in turn, will not be able to flow through effectively 
thus increasing the risk of atherosclerosis. Salt. Excess salt can flush out calcium in the urine, meaning it's not being used to ossify the bones, which can lead to osteoporosis. Excess salt can increase blood volume, which can lead to hypertension, a form of cardiovascular disease, as more blood is needing to be pumped around the body through the arteries than normal. Sugar elevates blood sugar levels, short energy boost, simple carbohydrate, if not used, it is stored as fat tissue. High BMI, if not used, and excessive amounts of sugar are consumed. And type 2 diabetes, excess fat around cells, inhibits insulin secretion. That concludes today's video. I hope that your knowledge of dot points 4, 5 and 6 from Unit 3 Area of Study 1 have been consolidated. I have now posted all of the Unit 3 videos on my channel, so feel free to review these videos as much as you need to. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me or comment below. Thank you.